live to your life is through And always be glad you're you Tip to your toes Watch the happy bluebird You're a millionaire Yeah! Comes from tears and strife So friend, beware Your blessings are everywhere Yes, it's time to get real Hi, this is Mr. Robert Neal And join us to get real Here at the Ecclesia Cafe Piano Bar And uh, here is Pastor Jay Welcome to Get Real 2000 Cafe and Piano Bar. Bible study. Anyway, I want to introduce to you our bartender, Angel. Angel. <laughs> hey, thank you. Thank you. Angel. Everybody loves Angel. Anyway, is name? this is number 90. Number 90. Woo. And it's called Receiving What Is Due Us. Good or bad. Some of us believe deeply that Jesus Christ will return very soon. That this could happen any day, any time. We become more and more consumed with the idea that nothing matters except to spend eternity with our Lord. Which is good. <laughs> and that's what I believe. But we forget that we are also, also called to continue our lives in a normal way, every day. The life that he gave us and also with all the gifts that we have and all the things that, uh, the toys we have, <laughs> to continue our lives in a normal way until that day comes. <clears throat> Planning for our children, if you have any. Saving our money. Making wise investments with that money and with our gifts for the future. Being a good example as an ambassador for our Lord each day until he returns. To maintain and produce, to produce the trees, everything, the nature. Just look at the nature. They're continually producing, unless we get in the way. To maintain and produce until Jesus says, it's time to go. In our ongoing chronological teaching of the first four Gospels that we're doing, we've come to a place where Jesus and his disciples are leaving Jericho on their final trip to Jerusalem. We're drawing close to the last week before the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. The people are starting to believe what Jesus has been teaching about the kingdom of God. They're starting to believe that. It's catching on. And they're saying, hmm, maybe that's right. All right, this sounds good. And they are getting anxious, thinking it will happen right away. People are that way. They want it to happen right away. And they are getting anxious, thinking it will happen right away. This is understandable when we remember what Mark recorded about the teachers of the law asking Jesus which of the commandments was the most important? That was in Mark 12, 32 through 34. You can read it if you want. I'll just put it on the screen there. And it says, Well said, teacher, a man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than any burnt offerings and sacrifices. 34. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. <laughs> You're not far from the kingdom of God. <clears throat> what he would like to have said, you're standing there. Your spirit is almost there. And until Jesus was to go back to the Father and, and the Holy Spirit come, 
to live in us. That's the only how far it would be. And this is followed by the witness of the transfiguration where Peter, James, and John were taken up on a high mountain. Some identify this mountain as Mount Tabor and saw Jesus and Moses and Elijah talking together. Remember that? Jesus taught that no one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven. No, the Son knows. He's talking about himself. I don't even know. Only the Father knows, Jesus said. However, Matthew writes in 24, 32, 33. Right here, you can look it up. Now learn this lesson, it says. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. 33. Even so, even so, when you see all of these things happen, you know that it is near, right at the door. John is, is told to write down in the book of Revelation about the souls who were waiting in heaven as well. This will be our first scripture that we uh, put up, and that's today's New International Version, Revelation 6, 9. It says, when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. 10. They called out in a loud voice, How long, sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood? 11. Then each of them was given a white robe, and they were told to wait just a little longer until the full number of their fellow servants and brothers and sisters were killed, <laughs> were killed just as they had been. And Paul talks about how all creation, all creation, the plants, animals, and the, the whole universe are all waiting for the Father to say, it's time. This is the next one. Today's New International Version, Romans 8, 19. It says, The creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. 20. For the creation was subject to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subject it. In hope, 21, that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. Bondage that they would be freed will be liberated from the bondage of decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. See, that tells me that all of creation, whatever it is, is no longer going to be decaying like it is now. And, but that all starts with us. <laughs> it's like salvation was there, but Jesus had to go to the cross first before we could receive the Holy Spirit and be born again. Next, we see how Jesus connects the kingdom of God with the coming of the Son of Man. And today's New International Version, Luke 17, 20, it says, once, having been asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus replied, the coming of the kingdom of God is not something that can be observed. Can't observe it. 21. Nor will people say, here it is or there it is, because the kingdom of God is in your midst. If you could observe it, you would be observing it already. It's in your midst. 22. Then he said to his disciples, The time is coming when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you will not see it. 23. People will tell you, there he is, or here he is. Do not go running after him, after them. 24. For the Son of Man is in his day will be like the lightning in his day when he returns which flashes and lights up the sky from one end to the other 25 but first 
he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. 26. Just as it was in the days of Noah, so also will it be in the days of the Son of Man. 27. People were eating, drinking, marrying, and being given in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. 28. It was the same in the days of Lot. People were eating and drinking and buying and selling and planting and building. 29. But the day Lot left Sodom, fire and sulfur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all. 30. It will be just like this on the day the Son of Man is revealed. Whoa. It's going to be just like that. And the twinkling of an eye. <laughs> Jesus didn't say that the kingdom was coming right away. But he didn't say it wasn't coming right away either. He simply told them what was expected of them in the meantime. What is expected of us in the meantime? Jesus teaches us to devote ourselves to what is good. That these things are profitable for everyone. Avoid unprofitable discussions. Paul writes to Titus, <clears throat> one of his disciples. Paul had disciples too. Titus 3 in 3, 3, 9, 11. And you can look that up. It says, but avoid foolish controversies and genealogies and arguments and quarrels about the law. That's what we're doing, huh? Because these things, these are unprofitable and useless. 10. Warn divisive people once warn them once and then warn them a second time then what? after that have nothing to do with them 11 you may be sure that such people are warped and sinful they are self-condemned it bothers me because of all of the, the divisions all the different churches and all of the different beliefs and how the different religions fight one another and in the political arena they get in and, and try to outdo one another and destroy one another. And genealogies of where did you come from and what color is your skin and all of this stuff. Paul said, you may be sure that such people are warped and sinful. They are self-condemned. They're condemning themselves. Lord, help me not to be this way. I know I do the same thing. We're all weak. But all we need to do is ask for forgiveness. And God, I just ask for forgiveness right now on this show. If I'm that way and that you will help me not to be that way. So there's a lot in the New Testament telling us to be patient and wait. And this finally brings us to our assigned scriptures in today's chronological study of the four Gospels. This is what where we are now in our progression. And uh, it is a parable that if we didn't have the Holy Spirit to teach us, it could actually challenge us to its true meaning. We'd be challenged as to what its true meaning really was. The Holy Spirit has to show us. And so, the Holy Spirit will show us right now. Jesus is calling all of us who have eyes to see and ears to hear to pay attention to all, everything he's saying. And then to invest that knowledge, to invest that knowledge by spreading his good news in the world, all over. Just his good news. Just love. Him. Let's look at him the way Jesus was and spread that in the world. Not condemnation and, and divisiveness and all this sort of thing. To pay attention to all he is saying and to invest that knowledge by spreading his good news throughout the world producing what will it do it will produce a harvest for him when he returns he's the one that brings salvation we don't we don't have power for that but we can be a witness we can put out all of the goodies out there we say these are vegetables that uh, can help you in different parts of your body and to keep you well and so that's good advice but you don't have to eat them it's the Today's New International Version, Luke 19.11. I'm going to have some of that good coffee. Thank you, Angel. 
and thank you people for being there. You're welcome, Pastor Jay. Mm. <clears throat> a beautiful cup. All right. Today's International Version, Luke 19, 11. It says, while they were listening to this, while they were listening to this, he went on to tell them a parable. Because he was near Jerusalem and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to happen at once. It's going to appear all at once. They were near Jerusalem. 12, he said, a man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. He's talking about himself here. 13, so he called 10 of his servants and gave them 10 minus. Put this money to work, he said, until I come back. 14, he's sending out his disciples. 14, but his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him to say, we don't want this man to be our king. Ah, who was that? 15, he was made king, however, and returned home. Then he sent out for the servants to, to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it. 16, the first one came and said, sir, your mina has earned 10 more. 17, well done, my good servant, his master replied, because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter. Take charge of 10 cities. 18, the second came and said, sir, your mina has earned five more. 19, his master answered, uh, you take charge of five cities then, five, five. 20, then another servant came to him and said, Sir, here's your mina. I have kept it, laid it away in a piece of cloth. He was afraid he's going to lose it. 21, I was afraid of you because you are a hard man. You take out what you did not put in and reap what you did not sow. 22, his master replied, I will judge you by your own words. You wicked servant, you knew, did you, that I am a hard man? Hmm. Taking out what I did not put in and re reaping what I did not sow? 23. Why then didn't you put my money on deposit? Put it on, save it, put it in a bank. Put it on deposit so that when I come back, I would have collected it with interest. You weren't thinking. 24. Then he said to those standing by, take his mine away from him and give it to the one who has 10 minus. He's the one that's doing all the work. 25. Sir, they said, he already has 10. 26. He replied, I tell you that to everyone who has more, more will be given. But as for those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. 27, but those enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them, bring them, bring them here and kill them in front of me. 28. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead. All right, here we go. Today's New International Version in Acts. Luke writes in his book of Acts that it's not about when the kingdom will come. Luke writes in Acts 1, 7, he says, He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his authority. 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So there's a plan, and we're part of that plan. It's hard to understand that the kingdom has already arrived. This is what Jesus was showing the disciples at the Transfiguration. Remember the Transfiguration we're talking about? <clears throat> 
Peter, James, and John went upon this mountain with Jesus and saw Moses and Elijah. That God's spiritual work on earth is already going on. He wanted them to see this. The servants in verse 13 that we saw in our scripture that we just read said, so he called 10 of his servants and gave them 10 minus. This could be the ministers and true believers of today who, who are to carry on the gospel of the kingdom. The subjects in verse 14 of the scripture that we just read, and it said, but his subjects hated him. Who are these people? They might be the Jews who rejected Christ and the gospel. His chosen people who actually rejected him, didn't recognize him. John wrote in John 1 11, he said, He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. So what do we read? He said, bring them and kill them before me. Tribulation period. In verse 23 of the scripture that we just read, of our scripture today, it says, why then didn't you put my money on deposit so that when I come back, I could have collected it with interest? We see a foretelling here of Jesus coming to judge his servants, the ministers and true believers. Let's go to today's New International Version, Matthew 16, 27. It says, For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, there too, and then he will reward everyone according to what they have done. In this teaching today, Jesus is telling us not to be concerned about when he returns, but maintain this field he has given us charge over and to prosper in spiritual things, that worthy ones will be rewarded, others will not be rewarded. It says, pay attention to this, this is a good one. So we make it our goal. So we make it our goal. What are we to do? We're to make it our goal to please him, whether we are at home, in the body, or away from it. Whether we're here or wherever we are. We please him on earth, the kingdom here, or the kingdom in heaven. Ten. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. We will all appear there. That everyone may receive what is due. That's our title. That everyone may receive what is due them for the things done while, while in the body. We'll see you next time. Now I live in all your promises. Nothing seems worthwhile Except to be In your kingdom of love My Lord